What's up y'all, it's your girl Sakina and I'm back with another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season 8, episode 16. Be sure to check us out tonight on the Whether You Like It or Not panel hosted by Scotty by Nature TV at 8.15 Eastern Standard Time where we will be discussing this episode and cutting up. Now last week we did give a bit of Mary the Medicine. So maybe we'll be doing that. I don't know. But if I look a little different y'all, it's because I'm actually standing up, okay? I got the tripod on tall. And I was like, I, I kind of, I'm inspired to get up. I don't know, y'all just clocked out of work, okay? It's what, 5.30 at this point? And you know when you clock out, you just spring into this energy? That's where I'm at with it. I've done two videos already, and I like to get this done the same day as the panel. So I was like, look, we got to get this done, and we have some things that we got to get accomplished. My birthday is tomorrow. Oh, my birthday is tomorrow. I have to change my out of office. Okay, I got to log back into my computer, my work computer, because I'm actually off tomorrow because it's my birthday tomorrow. Okay, I might get on here for a little bit tomorrow. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I'll get on tomorrow. I don't, I'm not sure. Y'all know I'm not really like a live girl. Just stay tuned. Have your notifications on, okay? We'll, we'll just say it like that. Anywho, uh, let's go ahead and get into this episode. So, the girls are back in the DMV area, and we have Candace going down to Kiana's place of business. So she has a beauty spot, and Candace is actually there to get lasered because her cooch has not been waxed. And she often uses that excuse to not be intimate with her husband. So now she ain't got no type of uh, excuses because she always going to be waxed down there because her hair is getting lasered. And I have been hearing about people getting lasered down there. I know they get their armpits done, and that's what Wendy did. I don't I don't really know if I would be down for that 100%. Lasering, I don't know. It's just not something that I've really entertained. I just kind of feel like, you know, hair is there for a reason, so I don't want to laser it. Like, I know we get it waxed, but, like, to kill the follicles, I don't know. Anywho, but shout out to the girls that do it. So yeah, Candace is there with Wendy and they're having a conversation about Kiana and her interactions with the ladies. So Kiana was like, you know, she was looking at everything from a bird eye view. Of course, she felt some type of way about them not checking on her. But she did say that, you know, those are her girls. Wendy wanted to reiterate that they did want to check on her and they did care about her and things of that nature. So they get into the dynamic between Robin and Candace. Now, Candace is saying that Robin is using words like defamation of character. So at this point, all gloves are off. Like I don't really understand because Candace said that she knows some things that Robin has said that she never spoke of that is actually defamation. So if she want to go there, they can go there. But I'm like, so what was said? She don't want to talk about it, but you you dangling carrots, girl. Uh-uh. Speak up or forever hold your peace. Because why why now? That was your good sis and all of that. So you was protecting her now. You just want to throw it out there. I'm so over this Candace and Robin relationship. But I will say I do love the fact that we are starting to get to know Kiana and her business. It is unfortunate that we got to know her at the end of the season. But I really do hope that we get to see her, you know, whether it be in a friend of capacity or a full time. I hope that we see more of her next season. But I feel like that does require Wendy and Candace to come back. We already know there's going to be some type of shakeup for Potomac. But... I feel like Kiana, she she was needed earlier on for sure. Grace going on to college and I'm crying. Ugh. I've been very much so in my Pisces energy these days and I don't like it. I feel like I've cried on camera a little too many times for my preference. It's really these shows and then, you know, my own personal stuff that gets brought up from the shows that just bring up emotions i'm just like ugh, you know i don't really be oh i cannot wait until my this video come back when on the 26th <laughs> we're gonna be turned up y'all <laughs> anyway yes so grace is going off to college and her saying bye to her sisters was just very emotional for me 
um because i wasn't expecting her to cry you know grace kind of has that giselle spirit it all three of them act like that honestly i never really see them get emotional they're all just kind of stoic in a way i don't know and it, it's probably just learned behavior from their mom but when she hugged her uh one of the twins she hugged her for a long time i was like she's getting emotional but you can tell she was kind of trying to hide it she didn't start crying until she got in the car and i was just like oh my gosh because that's me well shit no it's not because when i hold my tears back it it'd be like hold my breath i can't do it but for so long so Oh, child, I would have been crying it right before we even got to the hugging point. But yeah, it, it's it's just a very bittersweet moment because you're leaving the nest and you got to go out and figure it out on your own. And it's just new territory. So like I said, I know she's going to do great. Next, we see Robin having Sharice and Ashley over for, you know, some, some sushi, a little fruit bowl mix. And I was like, oh, sushi fruit bowl mix? A little cheese and crackers. Okay. You know, just a little something to nibble on as they gossip. So, Sharice, well, first, Ashley, first she shaded uh, Robin's grass. I said, all right. It kind of gave me, um, <laughs> it gave me Portia's uh, doormat when Marla was like, it was too small. I don't know why I put me in the mindset of that, but she said that Robin's grass was thirsty. I said, all right, yeah. There you right there. We talk well, okay. Hold on, wait. Because Ashley always got something to say about somebody's house. Like, why is that? Anyway, so yeah, she was talking about how she had to run errands and take one of her sons to the doctor earlier that day, and she could use a foot massage. So Sharice was like, I used to go to somebody who does good feet massages back in Virginia, and he asked me one day, Did I want a vaginal massage? And she was like, is that even a thing? So then production gives us a flashback of Ashley saying that Sharice is the type to pay for sex. And, you know, it's kind of like, well, when you said that, Sharice, it definitely put it in somebody's head. Because Ashley said in her confessional, you know, rich women, they like to pay the pool boy and everything else to bang them out. So it's not too far-fetched when it comes down to Sharice. I mean, you ain't beating the allegation, Sharice. Anywho, she wanted to do a crab boil. Very reminiscent to the first one on season one. So she wants to invite, uh, who she wants to invite? Jacqueline. Because she's hanging out with Jacqueline a lot. And you know, she's also cool with Mia. So she's hoping that they can rekindle their relationship. Now, it's just like, we know that they're friends present day. But we don't know if this is the start of where their friendship started to rebuild because remember um at karen's event mia came to this revelation of why she took a lot of her anger out on jacqueline so maybe she is going to be open to this situation she also wants to know if robin is going to be okay with karen i mean candace being in attendance robin don't give a damn but then ashley was like okay are you going to invite karen in which they had caught her up to speed with the whole Karen being trained by Vernon Davis. You know, Sharice threw a little shade. But she was like, I don't have a problem with Karen. Karen has a problem with me. So it sounds like it's an open invitation. NECA is preparing to go to this crab boil. And she there with her husband. They talking about how they want to put the dog in doggy school because he don't listen to commands. But I'd like to think otherwise. He said, girl, you listen, give me high five. And the dog gave him high five. And she was like, I hope that you're going to be better as a dad. I mean, what? He said that the dog listened and the dog did listen. So I didn't see the problem in that. But, you know, they still um in the process of trying to conceive and i guess finally on track with that and yeah child she won an nba player i don't i don't really care about her so much like that i don't karen invites giselle over you know for some much needed mommy time because they're both at this point uh well i was gonna say empty nesters but no karen is an empty nester and Giselle isn't quite there yet but she has you know one child leave the home so she can relate to it so you know, they just needed some time together. So she done baked some cookies and they got the tequila. You know, Giselle is sad about it. You know, it is what it is. But then they get down to the crab royal that Sharice is thrown. So Giselle wants Karen to be her plus one. But Karen said that she ain't going because Ray is really allergic to seafood. Well, that didn't stop me from attending the first one. 
So, okay. And yeah, I did forget that Giselle did get kicked out of the event. That's when Sharice really had her nose up in the air. I could not stand Sharice back then. And she's not my favorite person now, but I really could not stand her back then. She was so stank, so judgmental, always had her nose up in the air. Like, I just could not deal with her. But, yeah, she, um, Karen's not trying to go to this crab boil, but, I mean, I don't know if she's going to come or not, but we'll just see. But she did tell Karen that Jacqueline is also going to be in attendance. Karen is cool with Jacqueline, too. It seemed like all these girls is real cool with Jacqueline off camera. I wonder how Mia feel about that. So we get down to this crab royal at Sharice's house and she lives in the townhouse. I didn't even realize that that was her son. It was a rainy day. So it was her son that was um, going to get the ladies and bringing them to the door with the umbrella. Um, but yeah, Robin gets there first and then Candace arrives. Now, Robin was on her way to the door to let said guest in, but once she realized that it was Candace, she moseyed her way back up the stairs and basically was like, yeah, I'm not answering the door for her. <laughs> okay. So it's awkward between the two of them, obviously. And then to make matters worse, Giselle comes in. So you got the green eye bandits and Candace. And she's just there. You can see her texting. She probably like, oh my gosh, like somebody hurry up and come. This is awkward. You can see her ordering a strong drink. You can see Robin guzzling her drink down. I said, oh my gosh, y'all are that uncomfortable to the point where y'all have to guzzle some drinks down just to kind of relax a little bit. But uh, Wendy is not going to be there and Karen is not going to be there. And of course, they call Cap on, Ken on Karen not coming because she's been around Cap Crab before. So has Ray. She was at the first Crab Royal. So, girl, this is just an excuse for you not to show up. So after Giselle gets there, um, Jacqueline arrives and everybody's excited to see her. And the Green Eye Bandits are asking when the last time she spoke to Mia. It was two months ago and they ended the conversation y'all see that it's like a feather or something but yeah um they ended the conversation with a are you effing serious so clearly it did not go the way that they intended it to be kiana finally gets there and i said okay finally my girl got somebody to hang with because at first i was like i don't even know if kiana knows sharice like that so i don't know if she's gonna get an invite but she did and then ashley came <sighs> neka showed up with her um <coughs> grand dame of North Potomac sash and her crown. Baby, ain't nothing that you can do at this point to just make me interested. And that sucks. It really does. I came into this thing giving NECA the benefit of the doubt. Mm, you know, a chopstick buildup. But yeah, giving her the benefit of the doubt. And it just kind of seems like there's nothing that could be done for me to really just be like, oh my gosh, I'm going up for NECA because I just don't. And it's like, I, I try, I want to, but I just, I just don't. Mia gets there and she said that she's not surprised that the women are friends after their fallout. So it's very fitting for her to be at Sharice's Cry Boil, like I said, because they're friends. So when she gets there, Giselle tries to get the party started immediately. So last time I talked to you, Mia, you said that um, you and Jacqueline, y'all spoke and y'all were good. But then Jacqueline said, y'all really ain't. And Mia's like, yeah, there's things that we need to sort out that, does, that has nothing to do with any of y'all at this table. Okay, hence, mind your business, as she should have known in the first place. So they go downstairs, Mia and Jacqueline, to have a conversation. And I'm just kind of like, did y'all really have to have it here? I don't know, but we'll just see how it turns out. But the girl said when it comes down to this crab royal, the crab is very bland. She only seasoned the top. She did not boil it and obey a little butter sauce, no nothing. They said the drinks was hitting, but the crabs was missing something. How you gonna be bougie and don't even know how to cook? Who cooked the damn crab? You should have hired somebody. Well, hell, she may have hired somebody. Girl, you should have got somebody from Baltimore. So, they have their conversation, Jacqueline and Mia. And Jacqueline was like, girl, when I said that you need some pain, I was joking. And for you to take it that far, that was just too much for her. 
And when you really look back at it, just even in the moment, it was just kind of like, okay. I'm one of those people who feel like I don't go there with a person until I'm pushed. Like, it takes a lot for me to really just say stuff that will lead to a potential fight. But I feel like I'm also cautious. Like, and that kind of, you know, I'm not confrontational. But like I said, I do fight with my mouth. And that was more like of a younger thing. At this point, I'm still the same way. But it's not as like a, you know, like an easy thing for, for me to really go there or hit below the belt is what I'm trying to say. So if my friend, we was in an argument and she'd be like, you just need some dick. It, it would not have taken taking it to the point where I'm airing out her business like that. Like, yeah, it seemed like it took nothing for Mia to do that. And that's an issue. So Mia said that she has been in therapy and a lot of the topic has been around Jacqueline and she, Jacqueline pretty much already knew what the topic was and Mia confirmed. And she said that, um, Jacqueline said that when it comes down to how she's treated by Mia, she's let it slide because of the guilt that she's felt. But she said that she would have never keeping it a secret because Mia said that they kept it a secret. And she was like, no, I didn't keep it a secret because I didn't know. She said she didn't find out until two years after the fact. And she said she put it on her dad. Like, I would have never kept that a secret. So Mia could accept that. And she really wanted to hug it out with Jacqueline. But Jacqueline was like, no, 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 it's a little too soon. This is day one, girl. Let's just, you know, baby steps, basically. But at least they were mature enough to have the conversation away from the ladies and not allow it to escalate. I'm trying to understand what... Okay, so all the girls are back at the table. Sharice brings up the relationship between Candace and Robin. She seems so hung up on this relationship for some reason she keeps talking about Robin really cared about Candace. She was a good friend. We don't even know where this damn friendship stemmed from. That's the exhausting part. Like, we've never seen them interact in a buddy-buddy way, the way that we see Robin and Giselle. But anyway, y'all just keep driving this home that Candace and Robin was just so close. So, Candace is like, Robin, what you did was dirty. Robin took screenshots of a private conversation between her and Candace and showed it to a blogger who is also a podcaster. Now, Candace was making it seem like there was some real juicy stuff in this text that could basically harm her or, you know, make the people attack her. And Ashley was like, in what way? And I was like, yeah, in what way? What happened? What What did you say in these texts? But Robin is like, I don't care. I'm a hypocrite because Candace was calling her a hypocrite. And you know Robin, she has this thing where she likes to deflect. For instance, somebody could be like, you're fake. And Robin would be like, I don't care. I'm fake. I'm fake. I'm fake. What are you going to do about it? I don't care. She keeps doing that. That's like a big deflection. It's just like, girl, calm down, miss. I'm so glad Robin Dixon is not here right now. I get so tired of Robin. I don't know. Did, did y'all catch that side conversation that NECA was having with Jacqueline? NECA wanted to know what was going on in the basement. And Jacqueline basically said that Mia is delusional. So it seems like she wasn't really buying what Mia was selling. But I know that I was also trying to catch a glimpse of some water coming out of Mia's eyes because she kept dabbing and I really just didn't see anything coming out. So, you know, y'all know how I feel about people who fake cry. If it's not there, it's not there. Okay? You can still convey your emotions without crying. But anyway, yeah. So I'm wondering how Mia is going to react to that after seeing this scene, even though the scene was a little chaotic because you got Candace in uh robin arguing that you got neko trying to get the tea from jacqueline and then you got mia sitting next to candace saying oh you went to the vault for that one and they just keep da, 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 to the point where sharice is like stop 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 and then she's like banging on the table and i'm like sharice well, girl did you have too many drinks why are you reacting this way everybody is laughing at sharice y'all they like what the hell giselle is like yeah she's clearly drunk 
Me are like, oh, we about to get kicked out. <laughs> that is so me. When I see people acting like that, I'm like, oh, we about to get kicked out. Baby, soon as Sharice got the beating on that table, that was Candace's cue to go. So she got up and you know she real emotional. And uh Neca, Neca nosy ass. That's what that's why she went to go follow her. She was like, It's okay, you and Robin had talked about this so many times, like, and there's nothing that comes out of it in, in a good result. And I'm actually with NECA because it's like, how many times are y'all gonna have this conversation? It's literally going nowhere. Let's just let's just stop. Y'all had the conversation one on one. And y'all basically said that y'all don't need to be friends anymore. Cameron brought it up in Mexico. Robin talked about defamation and everything else. And here y'all are again with Sharice bringing it up. Let's stop. Let's just cut, cut, cut it. So then Candace decides to leave after she apologizes to everybody. Sharice had to go outside and take a breather, baby, because she knew she was on some shit. So when she came back in, she apologized to everybody. And Neka was like, oh, well, y'all know that uh, me and Jacqueline, you know, they made up. And Jacqueline's like, yes, one step at a time. I just thought it was really funny that Neka is just like all in the mix. Like, I know that she is familiar with Jacqueline through Sharice and them hanging out or whatever. But, girl, stand down when it comes down to this. Because you was just trying to get the tea on it. And now you want to announce that they've made up. It just seemed real two-faced and just a little too busy for my liking. But... Yeah, Sharice apologized for her acting a fool. And then Jacqueline was like, child, this made me think about Mexico. Yeah, you give Sharice one too many drinks, she's going to start beatboxing on the table. Doing the clips beat. Girl, no. Anyway, that was the end of the episode. Candace left and everybody else was, you know, just sitting around. The next episode is the GNA Fashion Show, y'all. I did not know that they had products to be modeling that quick. But uh, clearly, this is where the shit is going to go down be between Deborah and Kiana. So I can't wait till next week. But let's get down in the comments and talk. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.